Yo, and hello everybody, Mike here, Baseball Collector. I am coming on today to do a video talking to you about what I won on the huge auction that was last night on REA. And the answer is absolutely nothing. And I wanted to talk a little bit about why, what I was looking at, what I was you know, bidding on and hopefully going to try to win. And then my rationale and what I think is going on overall in the auction market. I think it's kind of fascinating what I'm seeing. I don't know who else is going to agree with me on this, but this is just my observations and my thoughts about it. But the um, auction market in general has gotten a lot more traction. I think there's a lot more eyeballs on things. I think that the deals that I used to get long, long ago through auction houses have largely dried up. Not that I think they're gone completely, but I am finding that things on auction are not as good of deals as I've, I've gotten in the past. And so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. I wanted to jump right into uh, kind of what I was bidding on and looking at. So if we go here, this is my screen for my uh, REA. I'm going to put my glasses on. And this was, let's see, is this my, yeah, this is kind of just what I was bidding on. The big thing for me was this right here, and that's this 33 DeLong Gehrig. I really, really wanted this card. This is kind of a white whale for me. One of those cards that I'll take in a low grade. Actually, this one looks pretty terrific. Um, if you zoom in, I mean, it just looks for, it's a two and a half, but it looks pretty great. I love the colors and it's an SGC holder, which is fine, honestly, but it sold for 9,300 and I had kind of, I'm going to say this, this is 93 and this includes the 20% uh, juice that they put on the auction and what it doesn't include is tax. And so sales tax for me here in Texas is 8.75%. So, or is it eight and a quarter? I can't remember, over eight. And so it, it adds more. So whenever I think about bidding on any auction item, I add 30% because when you add the juice, you add tax and you add shipping and insurance and all of that, it's around 30%. And so that's kind of what I think. So if I quickly, you know, calculate what this would be, if you add it on, you know, tax and shipping and all that, it's going to be a little over 10 grand. And I'd kind of cap myself at 10 grand on this card for uh, what I wanted to spend on it. And once it got, you know, to the price where when I, once I did the math, I don't get carried away. I don't get, you know, just hyped up about it. I let it go. And it's very normal um, for me to do that when it, a card gets above that. I mean, this would have been the second most I've ever spent on one card. So I'm not going to do that lightly. I'm not going to do that haphazardly and just for giggles. Uh, so there was that. Now, was, I kind of had a backup plan once. I was I knew I wasn't going to win the DeLong because uh, it was $77.50 is, was the bid price, the hammer price. But again, then you add your 30%. So this was my kind of my second choice. I kind of had it as a backup plan and that's this beautiful 34 Gaudi Gehrig, the yellow. I didn't have this one. I have the green in the same grade, ironically, one and a half. This looks way better than my one and a half. And there's a lot of people like it to me for a card. I'm, I'm just going to, I don't know if it'll let me do it, but all of the, the, this part matters the most to me, all of that, the corners being rounded. I actually kind of dig it because it's a card that's 90 years old, you know, it, it should show a little bit of wear. And it, to me, as long as the wear is pretty even on the corners, I don't think it's distracting at all. I, I just thought this was a gorgeous example of a one and a half. And so I was ready to, to pay up for that a little bit. I should say that I didn't. Um, that's about what the last one and a half went for back in May. But then you had another 10%. So it would have been kind of a quote unquote record price for a one and a half, at least in terms of what you can see on VCP. 
And I, no, I really don't want to spend that much for that card. So I, I passed on this. And then I'm thinking, well, there's got to be something lower end. Well, I had bid originally. I, I do kind of like Dave Blue Jacket 66, where I'll go in and, and put some bids on just so I have the opportunity to bid during extended bidding and kind of do that. Uh, I thought this 93 Tops Jeter was kind of cool. I, I'm not a huge fan of the gold ink that's there. Uh, and it's kind of streaky auto and like it just it wasn't great. But if it was cheap enough, I was going to buy it. And 360 wasn't cheap enough. Um, so I didn't end up winning that. Uh, I had bid on it, but I got out. See, look, high bidder over here is calling. No, 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 no. So these are all cards I had bid on and was outbid. Then there was this group of four different um, press steals. These are all super rare guys in the press steel Hall of Fame postcard set. And if you look at these prices up here, you've got uh, Cronin 775. And again, this is just hammer price. So like if we look at the Cronin better, 930. I mean, over a thousand bucks with tax. So beautiful very great autograph of a guy that's very rare on a press steel joe cronin autographs are normally 50 bucks so i have a hard time spending a thousand someday i may have to and, I, and it just is what it is but i have a hard time spending that much on that and you can see the autograph is kind of streaked there at the end again if it was cheap enough i would buy it totally um <coughs> but it wasn't cheap enough. Walt Alston, another pretty expensive one. There's his, again, another really streaky auto um, in black ink, which is not my favorite, but it's kind of that, hey, you don't see these often. You can't really beg, but again, over 800 bucks all in. Eh, I'll pass. Uh, this was one I really thought I... I probably should have bid more on this if I'm if I'm truthfully look how light that auto is. That was my only hesitation was how light the auto was on it. But he's another rare Perez steel 420, you know, 450, 460. Once you kind of go all in price, that's not terrible for that. Most of them on eBay are pushing a grand. So I but I the auto is like yeah. Um, I was actually winning that one for a long time. The Kovaleski is the last one that I didn't win. That one actually looks pretty good. Again, black ink, not my favorite, but a pretty solid autograph there. He's pretty rare. 510, 560, 575 with everything. So the reality is I just didn't see anything that went nuts. This surprised me. I, I was watching like everybody else and the card world, the the roof here, 14 Baltimore News, really cool card. I don't know how that's a three, but they didn't ask me to grade it. 7.2 million was the final. That's with the juice, but not tax. So 7.2, way lower than I think they were really hoping that this card was going to go for. I thought it might be a uh, eight-figure card. It's still a, a very expensive card that almost none of us could own, but not nearly what I thought. So that's kind of my my thought process through this auction. There were lots of cards on here that I needed, but you, again, you have to pick and choose. You can't buy everything. And so these were the things that kind of really spoke to me that I at least put a bid on and, and was wanting to win, uh, but I didn't. So let's go back. Let's, let's take this off and... Uh, just go back to me here. So thinking through auctions right now, there's people that swear by them. Uh, there's people that have never used them. And talking to you, Chris from Missouri, never used an auction house. We were talking earlier, but I know a lot of guys Dave Blue Jacket 66, Andrew Neff said cards. There's plenty of guys out there that we've used these for a long time. I think uh, Rick Vintage Oddball, I don't know if Mangini uses them. Maybe he'll put a comment below. Uh, but I, I've loved using auction houses over the last 10 to 12 years. It's been great. But over the last few years, it's been much more 
uh, tough to find cards at good deals. You're going to find super rare stuff in these auctions that you're not going to see on eBay. So if you're a rare card guy, and I know Dave was going after a few of them, if you watched his video, it was really great of how he thinks through the auction. But the reality is, for me, I'm picking up, you know, that Gehrig is not, not, not the DeLong, but the Gaudi is not rare. They're out there. And so for me, it's like, yeah, you can't negotiate. It just is what it is. Here's the hammer price you pay or you don't. And a few of them, I thought, oh, I'll just do $100 more or $200 more. And especially on the DeLong. And then I thought, no, I'm going, that'll get me, the more I add, the more everything else costs, the juice, the tax, et cetera. It just wasn't worth it to me because um, I had a chance to buy one at the National from Craig in a PSA too. So a better holder for me in my collection, slightly lower grade for a much lower price. So you just wait, you just have to be patient and it, kind of sucks. You kind of, I'd, I'd love to buy those cards and I would have spent good money for them, but I'm not going to overpay. I'm just, I've been doing this too long and I'm too disciplined about how I do it. Uh, I want a deal. It's that simple and I'll wait for a deal. Um, but I think the, the absolute, what I'm, what I'm seeing in these auction houses, whether there's so many of them now, that's, that's point one is there's so many different auction houses and they're getting so much more hobby press and hobby notoriety and you got ken golden and you with golden and you've got obviously robert edward is a, is a huge one in heritage and memory lane and huggins and scott and i could list you know dozens of them that are all out there and selling cards um it's a great place to go get cards but i don't know that you're going to find deals like you used to i used to say that all the time you're going to find deals go to auction houses and Look at me, I caused my own <laughs> problem, a self-fulfilling prophecy of telling people to go do it. Now I can't get any more good deals. Uh, let's see, so so many of them that are out there, that's that's the first issue. Again, I think more and more people are comfortable using them. They're, they have, by and large, very good reputations about their stuff being what they say it is. And they ship really well and everything's insured. And you know, usually it's a really good deal if you're a buyer, cause you're going to get your item, it's going to be what they said it was. And there's not a whole lot of shenanigans going on cause they're not going to risk their reputation for any one item. Uh, no matter what it is, they're going to, they have, a, they have the long game in mind and building a business, building a brand. Each of them want to be known for certain things. And so they're not going to damage that by having a pissed off person out there, you know, rattling the cages of problems. So you just hear about problems way, way less with the auction houses than you do say with eBay or because eBay just doesn't care. You know, they're going to have a brand whether you're pissed off or not. So it is a, still a great avenue to pick up stuff. And there's a lot of really cool cards on these auction house uh, auctions, but it just, I, I'm not seeing the deals. I'm feeling like the card market certainly softening in the low end. But from what I just saw, the cards that I would normally have thought I could pick up pretty cheap or cheaper than normal. Nope. Uh, the high end stuff, the high end, I don't, everybody defines that differently. I kind of think of comic, anything over a thousand bucks is kind of higher end versus a $10 slab that I might buy on eBay. Like I did <laughs> yesterday instead, that was my consolation prize. I went on eBay and bought a couple of low end, uh, slab cards. So I don't know. I would love to hear what everybody thinks about the nature of the auction house market. Do you participate? Do you not participate? What are your thoughts overall? Uh, that was my experience from yesterday. And we have a new Hall of Famer today, Jim Leland. So congrats to him. That's another discussion, which I'll get into in another video. But this, I wanted to talk about auction houses, give my thoughts real quick. And uh, that's it for now. We'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great week getting started and keep collecting. We'll see you.